devil never cry. Today, we'll be reviewing Yakuza Ishin. Like a Dragon Ishin is a remake of Yakuza Ishin, a PS4 launch title that was released exclusively in Japan. It's an action-adventure game that serves as a spin-off to the well-known Yakuza series. Set at the end of the Edo period in the late 1800s, you play as Ryoma Sakamoto, an exceptionally skilled ronin currently in hiding who sets out to right the wrongs of his past and avenge his murdered father. Gone are the illustrious neon lights of Kamurocho, instead being replaced by the castle town of Tosa and Japan's capital city at the time, Kyo. Similar to previous Like a Dragon or Yakuza titles, the game takes a non-linear free roam approach, where you are able to explore both of these different locales at your own leisure, taking in a multitude of extracurricular things to do like minigames, sub-stories, challenges and more. Despite the difference in setting and characters, if you've played any of the games in the series before, you'll feel right at home. I think this largely stems from the fact that the main ensemble cast pretty much is exactly the same as the mainline games. You'll notice that there are a lot of returning voice actors, as well as the reuse of a lot of popular character models. The most obvious being Kazuma Kiryu from the original series, being Ryoma Sakamoto in Ishin. It also helps that just like the mainline games, the narrative is somewhat serious and quite gripping in how it conveys its story and its tumultuous twists and turns, whilst also retaining a moment of levity and just overall nonsensicalness in a lot of the sub-stories that you can stumble upon. A balance that I very much enjoyed. Moving on from the characters and settings, let's talk about combat, which is going to take up a lot of your playtime in Yakuza Ishin. As I mentioned, you're able to free roam throughout the entirety of this game, where you'll be often accosted by wandering ronin, samurai, thieves and outlaws or even barbarians who seek to test your might with your sword. Whereupon being approached, the game will seamlessly transition into real-time combat. At any given point when facing off against enemies, Ryoma will have access to four unique and distinct fighting styles. Brawler, in which Ryoma faces his enemies courageously so entirely unarmed and quite effectively at that. Swordsman, in which Ryoma faces off against enemies with just his single sword. Gunman, for those times where a sword just can't quite cut it so you have gotta whip out the strap to uh, lay down some fire. And Wild Dancer, in which Ryoma combines both gun and sword to completely decimate all that he faces. You're able to swap between all four fighting styles on the fly, allowing yourself to tailor the combat to whatever style you think suits you best, or whatever fighting style suits whatever enemies you're facing off against. For example, Swordsman or Brawler can work quite well against just singular opponents, particularly in mini-bosses or bosses themselves, whilst styles like Wild Dancer are better fared off against multiple enemies thanks to their multi-hitting attacks that hit in a wide area of effect. I think what's great about the combat overall is that there isn't necessarily one fighting style that excels far better than the others, and it all just largely depends on how skilled you are as a player to get the most use out of each of these fighting styles. It also goes without saying that the iconic heat moves return in Ishin. Whilst fighting, you're able to fill up a heat action bar, upon which when reaching a significant level, you're able to pull off a set of context sensitive moves that are both quite visceral and highly damaging. At the end of every combat encounter, your performance will be ranked based on three different factors. The first of which is your attack, and how many combos you are able to pull off and the length of those said combos. Your defense, basically how much damage you took and how many attacks you evaded. And your technique, which I believe directly correlates to how many heat actions you are able to pull off in battle. All of these essentially serve to give you a set amount of experience based on your rank, with the higher the rank, the greater the experience you'll receive. This experience will then be turned into points once they reach a certain threshold, which can then be used to upgrade each of your different fighting styles. You'll also receive fighting style specific points that can only be attained by using that specific style in combat. So there's definitely enough here to sink your teeth into if combat is your jam. Moving away from the combat entirely, let's go back to some of that side content I briefly talked about. 
As mentioned, we do get the return of some well-known and well-loved minigames, such as the karaoke and the fighting arena, but Like a Dragon Ishin includes two new pieces of side content that are pretty hefty in size. The first of which is the side story, Another Life. Our Ronin with a heart of gold protagonist ends up being intertwined in a story in which he helps a young girl pay off her debts. Not being a sword for hire, however, a lot of this side content specifically revolves around farming and fishing, with the materials procured essentially being used to help pay off the debts. Another life does provide a nice change of pace. The young girl, of course, is Haruka, who if you've played the mainline games, you'll likely know her as the adoptive daughter of Kazuma Kiryu, so you can definitely see the parallels here. And you do get some nice slice of life cutscenes every now and then, which essentially act as rewards whenever you progress far enough in the side content. If that doesn't take your fancy, you'll also have the battle dungeons to dive into. After a certain point early on in the game, you'll essentially have the option to tackle these specific missions, in which you'll be dungeon crawling in an entirely isolated and sequestered away location. As you prepare to depart, you'll be able to take with you a small amount of troopers under your command, which are represented as trooper cards. Though they won't tangibly fight alongside you on screen, you'll be able to take advantage of each of these different trooper cards' specific traits and abilities to further give you an edge in battle. For example, some cards might buff the damage of whatever fighting style you're currently using for a short period of time, whilst others might slowly regenerate your health. The cards' levels and subsequently the traits they provide can be leveled up the more you use them in combat, and you'll actually be able to use them outside of the battle dungeons in Ishin, something that you apparently couldn't do in the original game. I found that it was definitely worth taking part in some of the battle dungeon missions, alongside just general sub-stories and side content, as they often ended up giving me crafting materials as rewards. These crafting materials can then be harnessed in the game's robust crafting system, in which you're able to make different swords, guns, and of course pieces of defensive gear to help give you that edge in combat. The only other aspect that I want to provide praise for when it comes to the Ishin remake is the graphical fidelity. The game was remade, I believe, from the ground up using the Unreal Engine, and it definitely shows when compared to the original game. The character models particularly look great, especially during cutscenes, and the environments that you're able to walk through all look fantastic and feel as if they came from a modern gen game. That being said, however, this is a Yakuza game at heart, so there is still a little bit of jank here and there that you've come to know and expect from this series. If you look at some of the NPC characters close up, the luster of the graphics fades somewhat, and their animations look like they've been ripped entirely from the original game. I also found it a little bit annoying that during a lot of the sub-stories, you couldn't necessarily skip through the dialogue or the cutscenes, which I found quite annoying as I often read the text I saw far quicker than it was being said. Overall though, as somebody who's played through all of the Yakuza mainline games, starting with Zero back in 2017, and as somebody who's also played the Judgment series, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with Like a Dragon Ishin. However, regardless of whether or not you've played any of the Yakuza games, if this historical setting seems interesting to you, and you like what you see from a gameplay perspective, I recommend giving it a chance. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe as there's more content on the way. Also, let me know down in the comments below what your favorite game in the Yakuza series is. With all that said and done, it has been me, Devil Never Cry, I'd like to thank all of you for watching, and as always, I'll see you all next video.